the command line is one of the most unique and recognizable components of the interface. It's been there since the very earliest releases of AutoCAD, when the program ran under the DOS operating system. The command line is where you will see instructions and options when using commands. For example, when I click the tool in the ribbon to start the line command, on the command line, I can see that the program is prompting me to specify the first point of the line. Once I click to pick that point, the prompt changes. Now on the command line it says specify next point or undo. And notice that the word undo is inside square brackets. I'll click to pick some additional points. Once I have drawn two line segments, the prompt in the command line changes. It still says specify next point, but inside the square brackets it says close and undo and those words have a gray background. The words inside the square brackets are options, and most commands display one or more options. When options are available, you can choose one of those options by either typing the capital letter, in this case C or U, by right-clicking and choosing the desired option from a shortcut menu, or by clicking on the option right in the command line. For example, I'll click the close option to create one more line segment from the end point of the second line back to the starting point of the first line segment. This also ends the line command. By default, the command line is actually a command window that is docked below the model and layout tabs and initially it displays three lines of information. But you can click and drag the bar at the left end of the command line to undock it and then locate it anywhere on the screen. You can also dock it at the top of the display window or redock it at the bottom. When undocked, the command line displays just a single line which helps maximize the drawing area. My personal preference is to snap the floating command line to the bottom of the drawing area. Even though the command line now shows just one line of information, it includes a semi-transparent prompt history that enables you to display up to 50 lines of history without affecting the drawing area. You can press the F2 key at any time to expand the command line to see additional command line history. Note that you can also click the button at the right end of the command line to expand the history. When the command line is undocked, you can snap it to the right or left edge of the program window or to a docked palette. For example, I'll open the Layer Properties Manager palette and then snap the command window to the edge of the palette. When I expand the palette, it rolls out over the command line. But if I turn off Auto Hide, Notice how the command line remains snapped to the edge of the palette. And if I resize the palette, the command line moves accordingly to maintain its position relative to the palette. When I close the palette, the command line snaps to the edge of the program window. If I drag the left end of the command line window, I can float it again. To dock the command line, simply drag it to the very top or very bottom of the drawing area until you see it expand and then release the mouse button. To float it again, simply drag it away. If you want to place the command window at the edge of the frame without snapping, simply press the control key while moving it. Whether the command line is floating or docked, Notice that a command icon helps identify the command line and indicates when the program is waiting for a command. You can click on this icon to quickly view and launch the most recently used commands. When a command is active, the command name is always displayed on the command line along with an icon. For example, notice that when I start the line command, you can see the name of the command and the line command icon. 
Note that you can also close the command line by clicking the close button. If you do this, the program will display a warning and also let you know that if you do close the command line window, you can display it again by pressing the control key and the nine key simultaneously to reopen the command line window. Even though I've just closed the command line window, there's still a separate command line text window that we can enable at any time by pressing the F2 key. This is what is known as the text window. It not only shows the command line, but you can scroll back to see up to 400 lines of previous commands and command prompts. Inside this window, you can actually highlight commands, right-click, and copy them to the Windows clipboard, and then paste them back to the command line, or even copy and paste the text into a Word document. I can close the text window by pressing the F2 key again, or by clicking its close button. Pressing Control-9 will restore the command line window to its previous location. 